There's some wild folklore behind the Owl House, and some seriously cool and mysterious characters have roots in some terribly interesting folklore. That's right, I'm talking about the one, the only, sassy wild witch, Ida Clawthorn, and Hootie the... house? Just what is Hootie besides a weird bird worm two bug demon thing? Well, they're tied together in some very, uh, intriguing ways. So hold on to your broomstick because we're venturing deep into the dark forest. To recap, because literally all of this is tied to folklore, Ida Clawthorn is a wild, reclusive witch that refuses to be put in a box by any authority, and especially wants to protect wild magic from being obliterated by the Emperor's controlled coven system. She lives with a demon in a living, sentient, endearingly obnoxious house far away from society, although she sometimes ventures into the human realm to collect relics to sell. She flies around on her trusty owl palisman familiar, Albert, and has a fiercely deep connection with the natural wide world of the Boiling Isles. Anything else? Oh yeah, she's cursed, which not only causes her to shapeshift, but also gives her prematurely awesome wild gray hair, claws, and uh, extremely dislocatable limbs? In folklore, there's a fearsome creature. She's very old, very deep magic, and she's both respected and feared as she protects the wild old ways and the forest. She herself is wild in appearance, with untamed, greasy gray hair, clawed hands, thin as a bird, even though she can eat enough in one sitting for ten strong men, with dagger-sharp teeth for eating pesky humans. Yeah, Ida's fang is cosmetic, but in her owl beast form, she has knife teeth. And sometimes she smokes a pipe, which I can see Ida doing if not for the restrictions on showing bad habits on broadcast. This is Baba Yaga, a vidma or wise woman witch who lives at the edge of the forest in a chicken-footed hut. Yes, a foul-footed hut, which I get really into later in this video because while I got cool Aunt Baba Yaga Wild One vibes from Ida this whole show, seeing that episode where the house has foul legs really brought this folklore tie-in home to me. There is just so much of Baba Yaga lore that appears in the Owl House, and even Ida's color scheme of red, white, gold, and black could be pulled from this folklore. For you see, the Baba Yaga has three riders with horses that change the time of day as they travel through the forest the bright white day, the round red sun, and the black dark night. White, red, and black. Ida's signature colors, minus the jewelry, but pretty interesting, right? Of course, Ida's palisman, Albert, is a significant tie-in too. Not in terms of flight, unlike Ida, Baba Yaga doesn't fly around on a broom, but she zooms about on a speedy mortar and pestle that she sometimes uses to grind her petrified victims in. But Baba Yaga is considered a Hapsidinia Lisu, a mistress of the forest, a wild protector of her domain. Help her receive a blessing, but curse her, cross her, or destroy her forest, she will destroy you. Kind of like Ida, who disdains the coven's controlled magic in favor of keeping the wild magic alive. She is also tied to the forest in many ways, but especially through palisman trees and their wood. Her father was renowned for his work carving the sacred wood, and Nita herself develops ties with the fierce Bat Queen who fosters all the lost palismen in her cave. And why the owl is significant, there is another forest spirit, a Lysavik, which also appears around Baba Yaga's domains. This is a male forest guardian whose favorite form is that of a great horned owl. If you see it on a tree, it's the Lysavik guarding their part of the forest. A fitting companion or palisman for the owl lady, no? But I just casually mentioned that some Baba Yagas can petrify their victims, right? Does that not make the Emperor's proposed petrification punishment for Ida in Owlbee's form so much more ironic? There's more to that too. In some stories, there are three Baba Yaga sisters, much like the Three Fates, and especially the Three Gorgons of Myth, who petrify their victims. Ida just has the one sister that we know of, but there are many Baba Yagas in the woods, and some of them are related, but all of them are wild old magic. They protect the forest and the wild ways, just like Ida not only guards her right to not be in a coven, therefore protecting the legacy of wild magic from the emperor who wants to end it. And this old magic is why the Baba Yaga is sought out by the brave or desperate. Unlike Ida who gallivants into the mortal realm to collect bits and baubles for her shop, Baba Yaga would never venture into the human world. You must go to her. However, she does take visitors and occasionally even an apprentice. Like Vasilisa, whose terrible stepmother has set her the impossible and, she hopes deadly, task of retrieving fire from the Baba Yaga. This ends well for Vasilisa, but really, really bad for her family. I cover this awesome story in another video. These visits are usually short, because she'll either die of you or eat you. 
When Ida agrees to apprentice Luz, her teaching methods are interesting. One of the first lessons is dumpster diving, while uh, treasure hunting in a big trash slug. It takes ages before Luz finally learns to spell, and even then, it's something she has to discover herself with her human tech. Ida takes her into the wild wilderness for her second spell, which, going to the edges of civilization to commune with the elements to gain an ancient wisdom, yep, very Baba Yaga thing to do. If she's willing to help you, Baba Yaga also sets up tasks that at first don't make sense, much like the treasure hunt. To reach her hut, you have to venture out into the unknown wilds and hope you come out alive. Once there, she sets riddles and puzzles, and most every interaction is fraught with danger. Some of her tasks to the clever Vasilisa are separate grains from dirt, clean the courtyard, spin hemp fiber into fine thread with a handheld spindle. But like a lot of it, if she spun every day for a year, it still wouldn't be fast enough and she has to do it all before Baba Yaga gets home, no big deal. Weave that fiber into fabric and comb Baba Yaga's own tangled wild thick silver hair. But don't dare braid it. Braids were common for every woman over seven to wear, unless they were eccentric, a spirit, or witch. Which means, of course, our society defying Baba Yaga is not wearing a braid. She is wild, uncontrolled, so is Ida. Her wild gray hair, which is a stark contrast to her sister's sleek, controlled, dyed, acceptable for the emperor's coven and society, hair. So Ida and Baba Yaga even share hairstyles. You know how Ida can take off her limbs to help out with housework and odd jobs? Also, in folklore, Baba Yaga has three pairs of disembodied hand servants that she summons to do small tasks around the hut. And more dangerous lethal things, like trying to stealthily off her 50 future son-in-laws in one night? Yikes! Just don't ask her too much about them because some answers make you too old, and you'll likely join their invisible ranks forevermore. I don't know if these disembodied helpers have the correct number of bones in their arms though because Ida only has the one, apparently. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest tie into the Owl House, of course, is Baba Yaga's house. She lives in a remote place at the edge of or in the middle of the forest, in a hut standing on yellow-scaled chicken's legs. Yes, this Hootie's Moving Hassle episode of Owl House really brings this one home. The crew is casting some magic, which gives Hootie foul legs and the house moves, like book howls, yes, but really like Baba Yaga's, which is surrounded by a fence of gleaming bones topped with glowing human skulls, with an empty post for just one more. Yours? With a gate latch made of human hand and finger bones. I feel Ida would really appreciate this macabre construction. Baba Yaga's hut also moves. It spins round and round, the door nearly always facing away from the visitor as a way of protection. Yeah, her hut protects her, just like Hootie protects Ida. Also, the door itself resembles a large animal mouth. Hello, episode one Hootie door. Now that Hootie door needed a password. <laughs> kind of. I mean, hoot hoot, password please. <laughs> Ouch. And of course, so does Baba Yaga's house. The hut, or kata, is her lifelong companion, her guardian that keeps out intruders that don't know the magic words. In order to get this hut to stop spinning and to face you so that you might enter, there is a phrase that you must say. Hut, hut, turn your back to the forest and your front towards me. And then it's enter at your own peril, if you dare. Now, it's said that the ritual huts built in the woods were built to resemble giant animals, the tall post for legs and the door to look like a mouth. When coming of age, a person would go through the door, essentially being swallowed by the animal, to enter and continue their ordeal. This is what Baba Yaga's hut is recalling, and it really reminds me of when Luz first enters the owl house as an apprentice. She literally gets swallowed by Hootie into the house, thus beginning her ordeal of becoming a witch. Thresholds, neither in nor out, are a very magically chaotic place, just like Hootie who is nothing but chaos. The show devotes an episode to demon types, and it's here that we find out that Hootie is some sort of bug demon, not what I was expecting, but hey, his hips don't lie because it's all about the dancing. The closest thing my brain goes to for Hootie the owl being a bug is Inuyasha's mistress centipede demon, but anyway, in Slavic folklore closely tied to Baba Yaga is a shape-shifting house spirit that can appear as a tiny little shaggy gray man, or else a dog, cat, rat, or snake. I know Hootie is a bird worm, but still, this Domovic offers not only protection from malicious people, but also babysitting and reminders before we had smart devices. You might hear him rustling through your belongings or even finding things that you thought you lost. Ever wonder what your cat stares so intently at that you can't see? It might just be your home's Domovic, choosing to be invisible. This little spirit who usually lodges above the stove or hearth should be treated with the utmost respect as he is the master of the home. 
Obviously, Hootie, huge bird worm, thousand teeth nightmare, and titan knows what else, is not a tiny shape-shifting man. But like the Domovic, Hootie takes care of his friends and protects them as best as he can. And he's a really good cook too, which again ties us back to the magical hut of Baba Yaga where her invisible servants do her bidding and probably cook a good meal too. All the visitors that Baba Yaga didn't like, she eats them. But yeah, Ida Clawthorn, the most powerful wild witch on the Boiling Isles, is basically a Baba Yaga, a way more approachable, cool end version. And Hootie is her companion hut. Pretty sweet, right? I really love this show and this folklore and thought you might want to get a chance to love it too. So let me know your thoughts and if you would like to see more Owl House lore videos, let me know in the comments below. If you're new here, welcome! I dive into the creepy origins of our favorite tales and share a lot of old dark fairy tales too. Do be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next disturbing tale coming out of the cauldron quite soon. Goodbye!